The Emir of uh, Kajuru Kingdom, Al Hassan Adamu, regains freedom after hours in captivity. Bringing up the question, just who is safe in Kaduna State? We'll be diving deeper into that. The Southern Governor's ban on open grazing divides Nigeria. A number of groups in support, and in particular, Fulani Cultural Group, totally opposed to it. We'll be talking to a leader of the group who says the South should forget about the presidency in 2023. And the 21-year-old accused of killing Super TV CEO Usifo Ataga makes a U-turn, denies killing him in a new video that has gone viral. We say good morning and thank you for joining us on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning. We hope that you're ready for the rest of the day. I am Osaogi Ogbon. And I am Annette Felixen. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning to you, Osaogi. Good morning. So the stories on the top trending this morning interest me a lot. First of all, do we begin home or abroad? Uh, I think home. Okay, home. Um, when we're talking home, the name, you know, Chidima Juku comes to mind, as well as Mr. Ataga, um, CEO, former CEO of Super TV. Um, we all heard the unfortunate thing that occurred, how he was um, found dead or reported dead June 15th, 2021, in a shot let apartment. And the prime suspect, you know, for that murder is this 21 or 22 year old Chile Maojuku, who's supposed to be a student of mass communication in the University of Lagos. So when that news broke out, it, it was a lot. It, cre it created quite a buzz in Nigeria's social media space because people were wondering, you know, how exactly she had the, you know, audacity to kill someone. I have quotes from Chidema to refresh our memory regarding her confession to the media that she killed Mr. At uh, you know, Osifu Ataga. She said, I took a knife and I stabbed his neck. I approached the door and he followed me. I stabbed him twice on the neck and I threw the knife to the bed. I was going for it. He was going for it, but I also went for it. He dragged the knife with me. It broke and he fell on the floor. He, she basically admitted here that she stabbed him at least twice. Now, there's a new viral video that we've seen, and it's Chidima Ojuku recanting everything she said you know, to the media um, a few weeks ago. And she's, she's now saying, quote, I never had anything to do with his death. I don't know who might have come into the apartment. Definitely somebody did, but I don't know who that person is. I don't know what happened when I left to buy food. I don't know. So she's basically saying now, changing everything she said that, you know, they were both having a good time in the, in the house and she left to go buy some more food. She came back, she saw the man in a pool of blood and she doesn't know who might have come into the room. So I'm really wondering what really happened between the time she made her first confession and this seeming reality TV show that we're seeing now because you know the police had assured us that she was in police custody, you know, apparently being the prime suspect in a murder case. But the video we've seen shows that she obviously was not in police, um, you know, detention. She was free. She had packed her hair in some kind of, and it was just weird, in my opinion, you know. And now we have statements from the police, um, the police spokesperson, Lagos State Police Command, Muyiwa Adejobi, who's now trying to deny this, saying the video is old, the video is fake news, it should be dismissed, the video is false. But... We don't think that's the fact because everything she said basically contradicts what she mentioned in the first video. And in fact, this video that we've, this new video that we've seen asks questions to say, oh, but during that interview, you said this, meaning that this new video was seen occurred after the first one. So it's a, it's a whole lot of questions. It's mind boggling. And you know, that's just what the facts are saying right now. All right. So let's quickly just play a short clip from that video and then I, I I'll share my thoughts when we're back. Before I was leaving, he stood up to lock the door. But when I got in, I was knocking. Uh, as there was no answer, I opened the door, was already open, like it wasn't locked. And the duvet was on the floor, plus pillows. The, the bed, the couch was facing the door. And the bed was stained with 
um, blood already and um, the floor where it was was blood and then music was on the TV was on the room was already disarranged like someone broke in then I saw him on the floor I didn't know what to do I took my things it is thing and left I was just I was afraid I didn't know if I have raised alarm they would have arrested me for doing it because I and him were just the only people in the room I was I just I just left I was packing my things to leave then I noticed that my clothes were stained so I changed it to another I took the bag that contained his ID and documents, bank statements. All right, well, um, that's the latest video from um, the prime suspect, Chidima Ojuku. Um, in my response, you know, um, I'll first of all start by saying the, you know, a lot of um, PPROs, you know, and persons in certain positions in Nigeria, I really just feel Nigerians don't have sense. Um, and that's why they put out statements, you know, like that, you know, with outright denial and, you know, completely dismiss what we can see with our eyes. You know, same way when incidents happen on the streets and the police uh, PPR will come to say, oh, you know, that's not exactly what played out, you know, um, you know, the policeman, you know, one thing or the other. You know, they seem to think that Nigerians really don't have sense. Um, and so whatever um, they decide to dismiss can just be easily dismissed like that. But um this you know once again and i reacted to this yesterday on online by asking if this was a tv series if you know if she's going to be the next next big brother if if, if what, what exactly is going on and why is a prime suspect in a murder case being interviewed left and right um, before we even get into exactly before <laughs> oh we even God. get into the you know how she's recounting her statements now whether you know she was under duress when she made the first confession or or not um my question first of all is why is she you know being interviewed left and right like a celebrity is she a celebrity killer is she what exactly is going on did Evans get the same interviews did um, Udua Kakman get the same you know media interview media rounds because that's what they call them when you leave the big brother house you go for media rounds so you know did they also get the same media rounds when you know they they were accused but this really is you know it is showing how we do policing in Nigeria, criminal justice system. You have a media trial, they find you guilty by the media, um, they call in press to interview you, and case closed. There's no further investigation, there's nothing more that you hear about the case. And that's why we have found ourselves here, um, because they assume that you know, the Nigerian public has already found her guilty, and so there might not be any need to you know, investigate any further. There might not be need to ask any you know, further questions and find out who might have been an accomplice or what may have happened, you know, go through our call logs and ask those deep questions. Maybe they have done it, I have, I have no idea. But if they had, then maybe you know, she wouldn't be granting these interviews. And why is a suspect being let out of a police station? Because I don't know if they have a recording studio in any police station in Lagos. I don't so why is a suspect being let out of a police station to go grant interviews um, or why is a TV crew being let into a police station to set up, do her makeup, fix her hair uh, to grant an it was, interview it was and a recount whole a statement. Setup, really. Did you see the black background? Yeah. So, so does Chidima Ojuku not have a lawyer who should be guiding her through what she should be saying? Who should be, you know, asking her to stay silent and only speak to her lawyer? These are some of the things that um, um, suspects in Nigeria do not have, those are some of the privileges that suspects in Nigeria do not ab absolutely have if you're not very, very rich, maybe. Um, there should be a lawyer who should have told her to keep absolutely quiet until they have um, a strong case that they are going to present in court. Um, this shouldn't even take this long. She should have gone to court just on his off strike. So she should have been to court by now. I'm not sure why there is no further investigation or why she is not even in court uh, defending herself, either pleading guilty or not guilty. So it's it's um it's just completely disgusting, you know, seeing these things play play out the way that they are playing. And disrespectful to the person who has been killed and the family of the person who has been killed to see that the murder suspect is given so much, mm -hmm. you know, attention and so much um, um, you know, prime time TV for absolutely no reason see, whatsoever. The only and question it's I irresponsible have to ask for the now police. is where exactly is Chidima Ojuku right now? Because if she had been, you know, been able to record a video when she's supposed to be in police custody because an investigation is still going on into a murder. Where exactly is she right now? She probably, I have no idea. 
you know. So she's uh, probably in police custody or maybe out of police. I have really no idea, uh, you know, why these things are happening. And I said yesterday that, you know, it might be a little risky to put it out. But if it was a young man who killed a woman in Nigeria, I don't think the conversation will be going this way. I don't think this level of, of it, it almost shows sympathy for, for the suspect. Um, I don't think that we will be having this level of sympathy for any man in Nigeria who may have killed somebody's wife or killed a woman. He would be demonized to the end, you know, and called a complete rapist and whatever word that you want to use on him. That's the way it always plays out. But mm. suddenly, you know, she's getting media rounds. She might be in the next Big Brother. She might go for, you know, might be one of the judges in the next Nigerian Idol. I have no idea where this goes or how, you know, th this All right, this will play out. I don't think it's a go that far. Um, now, listen to this. But when you talk about bona fide, bona fide stars in the National Basketball Association, we can pick at least 15 to 20 of them. Half of them are on this damn roster. There's no excuse to lose to Nigeria. Some dude, Gabe Namdi, who goes by my Gabe Vincent for the Miami Heat, a Caleb Agata, a, a, a Namu, however the hell you pronounce his name. You give up 60 points on threes? Excuse me. You can do better than that. And, oh, by the way, let's also look at Greg Popovich because he's a five-time champion, one of the elite coaches this game has ever seen. Um, hasn't looked the same since Tim Duncan retired. A little bit different now. So let's point to everything. And let's understand, still and all, you have enough to win gold. It should not require that roster spot 1 to 15 is the absolute best that the NBA and USA basketball can send. We have enough great players. They just got to care enough and be focused, ah. and we got to know that we got the right coaching. Oh, my. Um, that was Stephen Smith of ESPN during first take. He basically... You know, um, if you listen to that carefully and how we pronounce Nigerians' names and how he spoke about the Nigerian basketball team, you'd obviously feel an air of, you know, racial superiority, saying who is the Nigerian basketball team that the U.S. team cannot beat. It had that air of him, that air around him. And it really is very, th there's really words that I need to use to describe this, very condescending, the way he spoke about the Nigerian U.S. team. This is not the, the, the 80s. The way he spoke about us as though, you know, we should never have won. I mean, this is a fair game. It's a it's, you know, game with fair rules. The Nigerian team won. They won fair and square. So the way he spoke about it and then went on to pronounce our names to say, oh, the U.S. should have won. Stephen well. Smith, the U.S. should have won. The who, who are the Nigerian team to have, you know, it just really is very condescending, like I said. And he's, he's really receiving backlash. You know, Nigerians, in diaspora Nigerians in, in the U.S., Niger, even people on that team have been criticizing. How would you say there's no excuse to lose to Nigeria? There's an excuse. P they, some other people played better than you, worked well, harder than I, you. So I don't... Um so, by the way, the Nigerian team beat uh, Argentina again yesterday. Exactly. Um, Good uh, news. By quite a margin. Um, so, I don't think the challenge really is him saying that the USA, the US team shouldn't have lost. You know, I, you know, everybody will say that if if um, Liverpool plays Brighton, you know, and loses three goals to one, everybody would say that. You know, how can you lose to? You know, come on, Brighton and Hove Albion. You know, how can you lose to this? You know, it's the small way he team? said it that we're so talking about. I don't think that's here. a challenge. I think the challenge really is with um, the the you know almost racial expression with regards you know pronouncing Nigerian names. Um, that's where the challenge really is. You know, if you look at the responses from the you know the, the uh, players and the Tigers um, and every other person who has commented, that's where the focus is. Um, it, it it is part of you know our work as journalists and people who are in the media to always do everything possible to ensure that you pronounce a name properly. I remember that we've almost gotten in trouble here on screen because we mispronounced names or because we you know, didn't find out the right pronunciation of names from the Southwest or from the North or from Plateau State or wherever um, um, before going on screen. Um, it's part of your responsibilities as, as a journalist and as a person in the media to ensure that you pronounce a person's name because that's their identity. So that's where the challenge is, you know, with him <laughs> Um, you know, brushing through their names and almost mocking their names in that way, um, disregarding the fact that, you know, these people have fought, you know, and worked very, very hard to ensure that they got that victory. And at the same time, that is their identity and that is who they are. Yes, and, you and cannot that should play be respected. So this also shows that Americans or black Americans 
um, who always scream about racial injustice and scream about racism, um, to a very, very large extent, are very um, racially, um, 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 or very, very um, racist towards African Amer Africans, um, you know, who live in America. Uh, I've seen, you know, and even a friend of mine who lives in the U.S. had shown a video where um, his fellow black man, you know, but the only difference is that that one is a black American, he is a Nigerian, um, racially abused him multiple, multiple times. I still have, have the video on my phone. Called him the N-word multiple times. Called him a monkey, called him, you know, all those names. They're both black, <laughs> by the way. But called so him all those you names. Have a, and it really, you have an American accent, then you're... So, so it, it basically shows that, um, you know, the same things that black Americans always complaining about, you know, when a white man <laughs> breathes too hard, they scream, you know, racial injustice. They have that same attitude. A lot of them have that same attitude towards... Africans. So if you're not a core and a true black American, you very likely would be seen as beneath the regular black American. If you are from Kenya or Nigeria or Ghana, you are not seen at par Why with the regular ba black that? American. You're, you're so, perpetuating the system the same, of exactly, racism. It doesn't exact make sense. The same thing that you complain about is what, you know, and that's what Stephen A. Smith has shown there because it's not, it's not just about mispronouncing their names or being angry that the USA lost. That's exactly what he's showing. He's, show, he's basically saying, that's what I'm saying that the who racial are these, superiority. you know, weird names, you know, where did they come from, you know, and, you know, he's basically expressing the fact that he doesn't think that these people in any way with their very, very weird names, you know, should beat the United States. It's not about the game here. The challenge is not about the game. Now, the Nigerian basketball team has shown that they truly deserve that victory by the victory that they had last night. They beat up Argentina like, like a 20-point margin, um, I think 90-71 to 71 or 94-71. It was, it was a pretty big margin, oh. which is, and Argentina is the fourth best team in the world. So they've shown that they truly deserve that victory. That's not his challenge, or that's not where the backlash is coming from. It is the seeming racial um, expression that Stephen A. Smith put out yesterday. And yes, I know he's always been a very, very controversial uh, sports anchor, but um, you can't, there's things that you, could, you should never, never, never do. If I go on air this morning and I say, and I pronounce the name of one of the um, House of Rep members and I completely, you know, say, you know, it the wrong way and then say, I don't care how his name is pronounced, the NBC should send me a caution. In fact, the, where we work, I should be cautioned for that, but that's exactly what he did yesterday. And it just tells that black Americans are also very, very, very um, racist towards um, America, um, Africans, basically, even if they're both black. Hmm. Yes, that's all we have for you today on Top Trending. Let's take a break here and we'll return with Off the Press.